acabó tu dinastía, no soy emperadora, pero la corona mía. Santería o la regla de ocha is a popular syncretic religion in Cuba whose members worship Yoruban deities known as the Oricha. Practitioners of Santeria believe that every human being is protected by the Oricha, with the religion's complex divination system allowing everyone to communicate with these forces. This communication can range from divining insights from coconut shells to involving stories, metaphors, and proverbs read from cowrie shells. The ceremonies that are performed by Santeros, or they call, we call all Orishas, uh, we are a priest of the uh, religion of uh, Santeria Lukumi, and then we perform those uh, offerings to the different Orishas or God. When the Oyo Empire in West Africa lost its strength in the late 1790s to 1830s, the Yoruba traditions of Nigeria were recreated by the enslaved Lusumi people in newly colonized societies such as Cuba, Brazil, and Trinidad. The survival of rituals, chants, rhythms, languages, symbols, and legends today are only intelligible as persistent signs of resistance. During colonial times, evangelization took many forms, depending on economic needs and beliefs. Spanish documents show that indoctrination in Cuba was more relaxed in terms of religious guidance, late participation in the slave trade, formation of cabilos, and large plantations focused on productions, offering some insight into how African beliefs survived in Cuba. Brotherhoods instituted by the Calvidos, Cofradillas, also helped to promote the survival of West African traditional values despite the Spanish's expectation of Catholic indoctrination. Secrecy was instrumental preserving these Yoruban traditions and were massed under Catholic celebrations as well as the organizing of Africans into original nations allowed the sharing of spiritual traditions, leading to the syncretization of Santeria with its parallel relationship of the Oricha and Catholic saints. Moreover, the art of speaking through the drums and other instruments such as whistles and conch shells helped to unite different linguistic groups across the region. By the end of the 19th century, Cuban authorities began to suppress Calvillos for harboring delinquents and promoting African traditions, pushing Calvillos underground and transforming them into houses of worship for Afro-Cuban Cuban religions. Santeria helped its members to survive the difficulties of life by offering faith, healing, and counseling. Though petitions were made to halt these measures, the deciding council stated that the regulations allowing such gatherings and events held by the cabildos to be restricted were based on keeping public order and upholding morality, and few pleas were successful. Only a few years earlier, Cuba had sought religious freedom in fighting for its independence. When General John R. Brooke officially became military governor, he announced that the state would be freed from the Roman Catholic influence and all civil and religious rights would be protected. However, this did not stop the government from controlling certain practices of religion whenever it was considered in the best interest of the secular public. Spanish lawmakers in early 19th century Cuba were concerned about the ways that magical practices could harm people physically, economically, or mentally. African drumming and dancing was viewed as barbarism and colonial bans on the practices were reinstated. Musical performance is an important tradition in the practice of Santeria, which has largely been considered a form of witchcraft, and gatherings were regularly broken up by authorities who also confiscated ritual objects. <laughs> The Penal Code of Cuba and Puerto Rico of 1879 listed divination for profit and unlicensed healing practices as criminal activities. Rivero Valdez cites several newspapers that reported on the ensuing arrest and prosecution of people who were said to be brujos and practicing against the law. While brujería was not officially listed as a crime in the statutes in place in Cuba in 1899, many cases were still brought to the courts in the years following making claims against alleged brujos. 
An example of this are the 45 men who were fined and forced to complete five days of labor after being convicted of dancing and drumming in honor of Santa Barbara. Politicians continue to encourage Cubans of African descent to abandon their religious ancestral traditions, including their drums and dances. After the Cuban Revolution of the mid-20th century, the practices were discussed as being superstitious and negative folklore left over from the times of slavery that should be left in the past in order to move forward and lead a more prosperous life. Animal sacrifice is an important aspect of several Santeria ceremonies thought to be necessary to make holy a birth, marriage, or death, as well as to cure illnesses. Commonly sacrificed animals include chickens, doves, ducks, pigeons, goats, sheep, and even turtles. The initiation ceremony alone requires the sacrifice of approximately 30 animals. Hacer ese acto es la consagración de la purificación o la estabilidad o la firmeza o la salvación de la persona. Que sea primero. Y cuando se hace ese acto, existen las ceremonias que se hacen, no es solo para hacer el acto, sino para transmitirle a Olofi y a la ciencia oculta de la religión qué es lo que se está haciendo. Human skeletal parts have also been found in clear relation to Santeria rituals, some with clear origins, having been purchased or used as anatomical specimens, and others with more debatable origins. Ritualistic death wishes, the performance of ceremonies to inflict death on another, as well as out-and-out -out homicide have been linked to Santeria. Cuban authorities frequently tried practitioners of the Afro-Cuban religion for crimes such as causing physical harm and murder. Santeria ceremony on Friday now speaking out. Eleven people were charged with cruelty to livestock animals after Bear County deputies were called out to a ritual involving animal sacrifices. Our Garrett Berger talked to two of the suspects, a married couple, about what the ceremony was and how it was misunderstood. Garrett? Misinformed people. Yes. Robert and Irma Telemontes have both practiced Santeria for nearly three decades. They say they aren't cruel and they aren't criminals. They're just believers in a misunderstood religion. Though the courts could not rule that all brujos would be convicted, prosecutors used the beliefs, practices, and ritual objects of the accused to make their case, harming the moral character of the defendant and outlining motives for the crime. Stereotypical understandings of religion, crime, and brujeria shaped court cases, and many of those put on trial denied any belief in the practices of brujeria. However, over time and with increasing rates of globalization, these practices have grown more popular and, in some ways, have actually been commodified. The national ambivalence expressed through history towards Afro-Cuban cultural practices are currently combated by Santeria as a livelihood coping strategy. Forming under diaspora with African origin, Santeria has provided a, the people of Cuba a cultural fluidity, flexibility, and hybridity for religious expression. Santeria increasingly uses tourism as a strategy of survival, commodifying itself as Cuba's folkloric, national, historical, and cultural heritage. Unlike how religion had been banned from public sector under Fidel Castro's regime, the government currently has taken steps to subsidize and support Santeros and Santeras. The collapse of the Soviet Union, as well as the United States trade embargo, created an economic crisis in Cuba, who turned to tourism in hopes of circulating convertible currencies. Commodifying the sharing of ancestral knowledge is a strategy to resist Western capitalism, providing fortune readings, rituals, and initiations to international students at an egregiously increased price stimulates the economy from foreign currency. The foreign market's curiosity about the African occult, religious, and sacred is often embedded in historical exoticism that more often alienates a group of practitioners than welcomes them. Religious consultations as a tourist activity increased governmental and public recognition of Santeria. Caught between being criminalized and being commercialized, International tourism provides direct economic stimulus to vulnerable populations who originated a religion born out of the response to past attempts at government-sanctioned erasure. By understanding how current economic mechanisms reinforce the cultural importance of Santeria, we see it has maintained its intended purpose of resisting Spanish colonial hegemony and evangelism while marking itself a valuable asset to Cuba. I hope we get more recognized. I don't want to say we should be number one, but you know, I want to be recognized in the, in the world by our religion to be recognized.